Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Audio Flow. It's your girl Jacques, and yes, we just did another live video, but now I get to chat with my girl Erin. Erin, hey! Hey! Erin, <laughs> aka Muffy Newtown, and we, yeah. um, I think we learned a little bit about how you actually got that name, but in case you guys didn't know, this is the Audio Flow, and Erin is a an amazing voiceover actress and just a little bit of information i did tell you how i fell in love with you right erin um well I, are you telling the ketchup story or something <laughs> oh see okay see what had happened was i listened to erin do this book okay you know this story erin i tell you about it all the time i listened to erin do this book and it's called cruel and beautiful Okay. Nobody nobody warned me about this book. Nobody. I just picked it up. I don't even know I don't even know how I got it. Oh, I won a copy. I won a copy oh. from the author. And she said, Well, it's also available on audio. And yeah, I love audiobooks. So I pick up the book, the audiobook, and I listen to the first three minutes. And I immediately write the author and say, What the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> because if you guys have not listened to it, I'm not going to tell you what happened. But the entire story, I mean, Aaron, gosh, it was, you did such an amazing job. And I really can't, I don't know if I can really express to you how amazing your performance was in that book. Well, thanks, lady. You're I love that book. I love that book. It's, um, it's it's a super twisty and turny kind of book where you think it's doing one thing and then it's doing something else. So it was one of those ones that keeps the narrator super psyched all the time because it's like moment to moment little surprises and things that confuse you and make you say, wait, what the hell was that? Like, So it's like very romantic, but also very sad and mysterious too. Yeah, it was just all, all of that you said. And I'm not a big fan fan of like ugly cries I don't want to I don't want to cry I want to be happy you know yeah. most of the time you want to read a book and you're like oh it's all happy or you listen to it oh it's great oh they had sex and they had great sex and oh yeah that was great but yeah and in the first three minutes of the book I'm crying like a baby I just yeah. didn't sign up for that but it was so emotional and you did such an amazing job like I said and ever since then that was the first podcast I wrote to you and I said yeah. Aaron or Muffy, if you're listening to this book, I could listen to you narrate anything, even a bottle of ketchup. And oh my God. People... Well, so I lis I listened to that podcast that day because I think maybe you tagged me or something. And yes. um, I listened to it. And then you say, <laughs> like, Aaron Mallon, if you're listening, I would <laughs> love to hear you narrate um, a bottle of ketchup. And my kid was asleep upstairs. My husband was out. I was like, I've got some time. So I went right to the refrigerator and I got it out <laughs> and I was like, great, I'll do it. And then it just opened up this beautiful friendship. So I'm very it, glad I did it. It really did. And it's so yeah. funny. Every time I look at ketchup now, <laughs> I smell and I was like, oh, yeah. oh, to Aaron. <laughs> well, I, I told you what happened because my mom's new on social media and she, she basically only joined so she could see more pictures of her grandkids. <laughs> and um, so I had posted that. A, I don't know, a couple of days after we did it. And um, she's like, your father and I listened to that ketchup thing you did, but we're, we've are we got to know who was the man that came in halfway through it. <laughs> and she's like, what? She, she doesn't listen to audiobooks. So once every couple months, she says, now, wait a second, you do all the voices? So we always have to talk about how that works. <laughs> oh man, that's so cute. So has she listened to any of Wait, let's start with, has she listened to any Muffy books? Uh, no, definitely not. My mom is, well, I was raised super, super Catholic, and my mm -hmm. mom goes to church every single day of her life. Um, so, no, but she gets a, <laughs> she gets a kick out of it because, I, I think I said before, it's a, my porn star name, you know, your first pet and the, uh, the street you grew up on, mm -hmm. so she, Muffin was our dog and she loved her and so did I and we called her Muffy so she thinks it's hilarious that I've made this name up so she she like she feels good about it but I don't think enough that she wants to listen to what I'm doing. Oh, I think she should totally she should listen to it. 
You know, she really likes, um, I do TV commercials too. And so she loves if she's home and a commercial comes on that I've done. She loves that. But, but you know, she, she is a big reader. So maybe eventually she will. I don't know. Yeah. I wonder which Muffy book we could give her that would kind of be um, mom approved. Like, you remember the Kicks, Kick Cereal Kid Tested Mother Approved? Yeah, but I don't think, I think Muffy... <laughs> Muffy exists because she does things that Erin Mallon, you know, she, she does the things that are not mother approved. So <laughs> you should probably okay. listen to Erin's books. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll keep it to Erin's to books then. Darn. I was really trying to convert mom over to, um, to Nikki Sloan books, but maybe not, uh, not yet. Yeah. I mean, that might be a bit much for mom. <laughs> so Who what's knows? going on? What's new? What's going on with, with this? Tell us what's new in Erin land. Oh, so much is new. So, well, you know, I've been telling you about my new booth. I'm so excited about my new booth. Yeah. Um, So it's all done now, and we're doing sound tests and making sure we get everything just right. But I'm making it just like my dream booth. I have purple acoustic foam. I've got a great microphone. I got this crazy shag carpet rug. Um, (laughs) We built a table with white faux fur. I've got a little gold lamp. Um, yeah, I'm just making it my, my little dream booth. Cause I'm going to spend a lot of time in there. Yes, you so, are. Is it ready? Yeah, yeah it's ready. It's ready. Oh, yay. Um, so you so have I'm a great doing, opening. Ah, sort of. I'm going to, I'm going to do like a little video tour, I think, and, and put it online for people to see and take some pictures and all that. Um, but, uh, I'm doing my first book in there next week. Well, I am excited to see it. I should. I should totally push the camera button so you can, so I can have a treat before everybody else. Like, I want to feel special. Uh, I want to see. You are special, girl. Yeah, I'll I'll show you. I'm down in the basement right now hiding from my kid, but I'll definitely send you. She's hiding. (laughs) She's in the basement hiding, everybody. But she's got this new studio in home. And I, I saw a couple pictures last week. And let me just tell you, the only thing you're missing is like the disco ball. You need a disco well, ball. Uh, you you were the one that said it sounds kind of like 80s porny. 80s porn. <laughs> I was, I was kind of going for like modern <laughs> romance, but 80s porn works too. Well, shoot. 80s porn is modern romance, sort of. Uh, True. Backwards. I don't know. But yeah, I it was, it was I don't want to say, no, it wasn't porny, Erin. It just, you know, <laughs> was eclectic. <laughs> Well, I have, I also have, um, red chili pepper lights that were in a play of mine a couple years ago. And I was like, what am I going to do with these now? So that might be a little much, but I might, I might drape them on the outside of the booth. So my husband knows when they're on, I'm recording and you don't come in. Yeah, so that makes sense. It's like the red light. The red exactly. light's on. Exactly. <laughs> So, okay, so Erin, this was Audiobook Month, and I've been stalking your page and Twitter, and you've been doing kind of um, every day celebrating with um, books that you've narrated and with the authors and things like that. So um, how has that been kind of, you know, reminiscing about some of the books that you've done? Was it was it fun? Did it make you want to go back and, you know, listen to them or remind you or take you to different places yeah, I I can honestly say I, I don't listen to books that I've narrated. What? Um, no, because I've already read them three times. You know, I <laughs> I read them when I sat down to prep, and then I do a speed read, and then I, of course, you know, perform it in the booth. So I've already read it three times. So I'll listen to the clip that Audible puts up on the site so I know what people are hearing. But mm-hmm. yeah, no, I, I don't have time to listen to myself. <laughs> so Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, could you listen to yourself for 10 no, hours? <laughs> no, no, I can't. I don't even listen to my podcast after they go out. Yeah, because you already did it. You already, yeah. Yeah, I just, but I don't like my voice, so that's probably why I don't listen to it. Totally different reason from you. Nothing wrong with your voice, girl. <laughs> yeah, um, sure. <laughs> yeah, but um, but doing the, the author shout-outs every day has been fun because um, I love connecting with the authors that I work with. And sometimes if I haven't worked with them in a couple months, it is nice to reminisce with them and have a little back and forth online. And, and then it always introduces me to some, some listeners that I didn't know were listening to certain things and enjoying Mm -hmm. certain things. 
So yeah, it's been a really fun social media kind of month to connect with people. And you have how many books total now in your library, I guess combined as Aaron and your super sexy altar? Yes, I think I think I have about 170 posted and I have about I think five that have yet to post and then I have about 10 lined up for this summer. So oh, nice. I, yeah, so I think come mid fall, early winter, maybe we can hit 200. That, that, well, I don't see that being a problem. I, I, yeah. I'm really close. Like, yeah. really close. And when did you start, Erin? Uh, the very first book I did was in 2010. And then I had a little bit of a, you know, a slow start where I'm like, well, how do I actually make this happen and build some momentum? And at the time, I was still doing other work too. I was still teaching yoga and mm -hmm. I was in a lot of plays and doing a lot more commercial voiceovers. Um, but I think in 2013, I pretty much cut everything down to audiobooks and playwriting, that those are mm -hmm. my, the two things that I do. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, that's, I mean, you've been, uh, like I said, I was just introduced to you. It had to be at the end of at the end of last year. Actually, I heard you, um, Muffy, in um, Helena Hunting's Pucked. Oh, right, right. And, but, you know, I think early on, I wasn't really paying attention to who was narrating. It just, you know, picked up the book. Yeah. Actually, let me tell you how I got that book. It was 2.30 a.m. I don't know why I was scrolling through my phone, but sometimes that happens and you're scrolling through your phone and Amazon subliminally throws things at you. And I must have been in some type of mood because that book did not say pucked when I looked at it. Well, wow. so just imagine what you thought. Yeah, exactly. I thought it was something else. Right. It wasn't yeah. pucked. And I was like, okay, and I bought it and I rolled over. <laughs> and then <laughs> I woke up the next morning and I was like, what is this book? And I was like, it's not even the word I thought it was. And so, yeah, right. that's how I ended up with it. And I whisper synced it because somebody said it was funny. And there you have it. I was introduced to Muffy as Violet. Uh, well, and... yeah, I've, I've loved, you know, you, when you're younger, when you're just starting out, you don't exactly know what your niche is or if you mm -hmm. have one. So you kind of have to try everything and then see where you get the most joy and mm -hmm. also um feedback like positive mm -hmm. feedback and i have found that i really love that sweet spot of like sexy comedy i find mm -hmm. that so fun and helena hunting is really good at that yeah so. that was that was i think that was the first um i guess introduction into a rom-com that i had uh and it was super funny especially the early scenes with her at the, in the pool house having me time and yes. her mom deciding that she was going to come visit and <laughs> awkward. <laughs> I, I remember that recording so clearly because I was, um, yeah, I recorded that at audible in, um, Newark and I had an engineer who I'd worked with on one or two books before. So we knew each other and this nice guy that would like walk me to the train at night and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And um, he was having a hard time with that book. I could tell it was making him uncomfortable. And also <laughs> he couldn't get over the fact that she kept calling it her beaver. And, you know, we were <laughs> playing with the whole Canadian thing. So she was doing a shtick with the beaver thing. And he's like, how many times is she going to call it a beaver? I'm like, oh, it's, it's consistent. It's a beaver. That's what it is. And he's like, all right. He had a hard time. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it. Th the whole book was just so entertaining, and um, and like I said, you did a great job with it, and I, I need to go back and finish the others, but then you also did, um, gosh, you've done so many, and I try to keep up with everything, but of course, um, you did an interview with Jana Aston, and we okay. posted it up and everything, and um, her whole, her books really took off in the area of rom-com and yeah. so what was your um first of all how did you not laugh I mean you had to have you had to have laughed at those scenes and and especially um wrong was it wrong uh, yeah well, yeah gosh. that's the first one in the in the gynecologist office yes gosh um, <laughs> yeah for sure for sure um I don't know I think because I'm 
I've worked on stage for so long and I love comedy and I write comedy that um, it's not really an issue for me to break on stage or break in the booth. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, like Jimmy Fallon is always breaking on uh, SNL. Like I was always like, come on, dude, get it together. You're the performer. (laughs) Let them laugh. You play the joke. So um, I don't really have trouble with that, but I do um, afterwards love to chat with people about what the hell I just had to say and do. That's always fun. Um, (laughs) But you're a good one because um, that scene, okay, I don't want to spoil it, but that one scene when she's in the gynecologist's office and she's having this internal monologue with herself. Uh-huh. And yeah, and it's some parts in there. And so I went to the doctor a couple of days ago and I just started thinking about this <laughs> book and I was like, well, yeah, my doctor doesn't look like Luke, so I won't be having that trouble. <laughs> I won't be having that problem. So <laughs> never had that. Tr- well, you know, that's one of the things I love most about Jana's writing is is her monologues, because I I've told her before, I feel like her books feel like a 300 page monologue Mm -hmm. where a lot of sometimes you're working on, um, books that are, are very good. They're like literary fiction and it's very well written, but it feels like it was never meant to be performed, Mm -hmm. which it probably wasn't. Mm -hmm. Um, but then you have some books that they just lend themselves so easily to someone acting them and they feel like you have a 300 page theatrical script and, and that's how Jana's writing feels to me. So that's a blast. It makes your job so easy. And did you connect with one of the characters more than the others? Because I think Everly was my favorite, even though she was kind uh-huh. of wacky. But um, when you went through all of them, did you just say, okay, I can really identify with this character? I, it, it's kind of, that's your job is to identify with each of them. So, um, yeah, no, that wasn't a problem at all. Um I'm, I'm probably, it's terrible. I think I'm forgetting, um, in trust. Oh, are you going to ask me what their names are? Don't ask. No. Okay. Then don't ask me. <laughs> um, I'm just not remembering it on the spot, but I remember in trust, the main character is just, um, I found her so fascinating, so interesting. And, um, she had all these anxieties and different things that were going on in her. She just felt so real. So, um, I loved her, but yeah, Everly was a blast, and and she appears in every book, and every time she does, you're kind of like, oh, there she is again. Chloe, uh, Chloe, that's Chloe. it. Yeah, yes. Chloe. It's it's interesting. A lot of people said that they identified with her, um, her uh, quips and anxiety and thing like and things like that. And I like how um, how each one of them actually had something. Um, for sure. Um, something going on with them. And Everly, I think I liked her because she was very vocal. And mm. and what I like about um, about you as a performer, as well as, you know, some others, you know, I can tell it's you, but in each book, you make sure that each person has their own voice. And okay. you carry that throughout the book, the series. And so it's not like, okay, we know you were surf, you were Sophie in the first book. And now Everly's going to sound like Everly is going to sound like Sophie did because now Mm. she's the main character. No, you still sound like the Everly that was in the first book. And I, and I think that's really important, especially when you have characters that cross over. Um, so do you, do you like just remember what they sound like? I know you said you don't go back and listen to the books, but how do you make sure that you, keep with that character's sound yeah it's um it depends um I was lucky to do those books pretty back to back Mm -hmm. sometimes you'll get a batch of books and you're doing this four book series and they're all written and go other times you do one one year and then the author works on the next book and you don't do it till a year and a half later Mm -hmm. so when that happens I I do go back and I listen to clips Mm -hmm. but it's interesting because the way the way I'm I'll hear a voice that I did it. I'm not, when I'm performing it, I'm not hearing it. That's not what I'm doing. It's, it's like a feel in my body. It's a placement of sound. It's, um, it's a posture, it's a facial thing. It's a vision I have in my head. So it's kind of like listening only helps me so much. I have to remember the feeling and the intention that was behind it. Um, and I think that's, that's something I, I guess that comes with practice and just remembering the experience that you had in the booth. Um, but a lot of people, they, they think that, um, 
you're crafting very, very specific voices. And ideally you are, but they're not, it comes from the acting behind it. Like who is Everly? Like Mm -hmm. she, to me, wouldn't have this soft kind of timid thing going on. She'd be more ballsy with her vocals and Mm -hmm. she might be a little more peppy. She might have more rhythm. So there's a lot of things that you can do that are all coming from the way the author describes her characters. So the author does that work for me, and then mm-hmm. I find my way to interpret what she's trying to do. Well, um, you, you did a great you do a great job with it. So <laughs> we, uh, as listeners, appreciate it, and um, it's why you were the inspiration be- behind the Aurelie Screw collection. So it's such an honor, such an <laughs> honor. <laughs> and you guys, in case you don't know how this. I'm really, you know, I try to remember how I came up with the orally screw. And I have to make sure I say orally because, you know, people will say orally. And yeah. that makes it a whole different collection. And so, yeah, we're not doing the orally screw collection. It's oral. And um, you and I were having a chat. And I think this was right after the catch up. And uh- I said, oh, my gosh, I'm going to make you a shirt. And it's going to say, um... Oh, I said I was going to make your mom a shirt or something and was going right. to say, um, I forgot. I don't even remember, but I, we started going back and forth and I was like, yeah, I'm going to make this shirt. And then I didn't make it and I, crap, I don't even remember what it said. And then a couple months later, I was reading somebody's newsletter and I think I had just listened to um, three simple, three simple rules. And uh-huh. I was like, oh my God, this book is just, yeah, Okay can't really even say how good this book is and in my review I just put yep hot af that's it that's <laughs> my review <laughs> and I was and I was reading this um this newsletter and I think somebody mentioned something about um uh either royally screwed the Emma Chase book or something and I was like yeah screwed yeah and then I was like orally screwed my ears just got screwed listen to that book and there it was and I was like it's all Muffy's fault not her <laughs> fault, but she's you inspired that collection because um, <laughs> you bring our ears to eargasms. I don't I, know. That, you know that makes me very happy. I'll, I'll never forget one day. Which was I on? Um, I don't know if I was on oral fixation or which group I was on. Someone had tagged me in um, a meme that they made, and it said. Why does Erin Mallon's male voice turn me on more than any male does? <laughs> and it was so, it was the best compliment. It was like 4 p.m. in, you know, it was like on a Tuesday. I'm like, well, this is nice. And then all these ladies started saying stuff and like how they need their batteries and all this stuff. I'm like, well, this is lovely. So I, I watched it for a little bit and then I just piped in and I'm like, ladies, you made my day. Thanks so much. And um, I don't even remember who did the meme, but she's like, oh my God, I didn't know you were in this group. I'm so embarrassed. I'm like, come on. This is the best compliment I could have gotten. It was funny. Yeah, so uh, I mean, you yeah, yeah. So I've told you before, and people have told you before. You know, some, you know, some people like um, dual and duet narrations and all that. But I'm telling you, you can do a whole book in a male POV. I don't know if you'd have to drink a lot of tea or what your whole voice and diaphragm would have to go through. But I right. listen to you do a whole book as a man. Is that Thanks. weird? <laughs> I have done a couple where um, it's alternating POV, but they've had me do the male chapters as well. Uh-huh. I've maybe maybe done like three or four books like that. And it is kind of intense because you're used to just popping into the male voice. And I know how to take care of my, my vocal cords and stuff, but I didn't have the experience yet when I did a first book like that of doing a whole chapter as a man. Mm-hmm. And then I the second day of recording, I knew better how to take care of myself. But the first day I was like, oh. This is interesting, um, but it was fun. So what's your routine to make sure that you keep your, you know, your vo- vocal cords, can I say lubricated? Sure. You can say lubricated <laughs> anytime you want. Um, you know, I don't do anything too crazy. It's, um, I just drink a ton of water, a ton of water all the time. And, um, it's just, I don't even know how to describe it. Ways that I place my voice because you have to, you have to give the hint of a slightly lower range so people mm-hmm. know that you're a man without sounding like you're mocking. Mm-hmm. And because, you know, people 
you want to suspend their disbelief. So you want them to always know that it's a man talking, but you don't have to go way down here. And like yeah. people would hate that. Um, <laughs> I so sound like a I, bear. <laughs> yeah. So I think I've just found the placement in my, my throat and my breathing that helps me access that place without hurting anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just something I've had to figure out over time. Yeah. Um, yeah, but just tons of water. That's that's all I do, really. Is that water with the, without ice? Yeah, I do it without ice. Okay. Yeah. I, I would assume that if it was really cold, that would probably not give you, it wouldn't be effective. Yeah, I just do room temp. Room temp. <laughs> Is that your commercial voice? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Did it sound like a commercial voice? It sounded um, like you were doing a commercial for room temperature. Well, it's so interesting um, because... Commercials are such a different skill than audiobook narrating. Um, so it's a totally different thing because – so one of these – I'm the voice of Roomba and the voice of um, EpiPen. Mm-hmm. And um, so a Roomba commercial came on in my mom's living room, and she said, um, I think there's another girl that's doing the Epi, uh, the Roomba spot. And I was like, no, mom, that's me. I just recorded it. And she's like, no, it didn't sound like you. It's not you. And I'm like, they probably would have told me if I got recast. I, I think it's me. And um, I just sounded very different to her. And I think it's because you – with commercials, you're selling something. Mm-hmm. And you it's usually a 30-second spot. So they need – like coach the hell out of you. And they're like, I need that line to sound more smiley. I need that one to go down. I need this. So it's really um, orchestrated where when you're doing audiobooks, you need to sound 100% human and be a storyteller for 10 to 12 hours. Mm-hmm. So um, just a totally different skill. So that might've been my commercial voice. I don't know. That was your commercial voice. I even went on your page and watched you do the commercial. Um, oh yeah. Where were you? You were selling, like you were selling an apartment or you lived in some high Oh, yeah. That was for some, um, what was that? Toll Brothers. It was a a real estate thing a bunch of years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe you watched that. Oh my gosh. Why wouldn't I? I'm your, I'm like your number one fan. Oh, I love that. Thanks. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I guess because that was on my page before I separated my Facebook pages to be one for narration and one for playwriting. Yeah. I just want, so that's why that's still on there. Yeah. Well, but. I, I watched it. I try to watch, I watch everything as I look left and right. I'm feeling sort of kind of like the guy, the girl in misery where it's like, oh, I'm, your number one. Well, I'm sorry. No, <laughs> really. I'm not. I, I'm just joking. <laughs> You're going to break my legs. Oh, Gosh, no, I never do that. I never, I never destroy anything that that would prevent you from putting out more audiobooks. <laughs> well, I want to ask you a question. I, how, what is your listening kind of um, schedule? You're listening to something every day, aren't you? Well, um, yeah, sort of. I mean, I don't sleep. So for the most part, I always have something that I'm listening to. So yesterday, at nope, at uh, three o'clock this morning, I finished "Taking Turns" by J. A. Huss, and uh, it was narrated by Ava Erickson, Tad huh? Branson, Sebastian York, and Joe Arden. Yeah, and it was absolutely amazing. And awesome. Yeah, the casting was really good. Um, I think each one of them fit their part, and that's always important to me is that the casting is done correctly and it's believable that they can pull off that character. And then um, today I'm listening to Priest by... Yeah. um, (laughs) Yeah, I don't really know. (laughs) Have you heard... have Have you listened to that book? I have not listened to it, but people have been talking about it, and I, I would like... I'm going to listen to a clip and, and see what people are writing more because I don't just the title alone. I'm like, what the hell is this about? Having grown up Catholic, I want to know what's going oh, on there. Oh, yeah. You, uh, but you, it's just a guy's name. To do. Oh, see, now it started playing as I was trying to tell you. So it's, it's by Sierra Simone. It's narrated uh-huh. by Jacob Morgan. And um, Elena Wolf has a couple of parts in there. And basically, it's about this guy he's a priest he's 29 though and he um he's a young priest 
and um I can't really tell you anything about else out what about he, it, but but what's he but, doing in a romance book? He's a priest. Well, he's a man. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He's wow. a man. And and I'll tell you I okay, so in case some people didn't know, I was in the ministry. And so um I was in the ministry and as I listened to this book, it really brings back a lot of inform it, it brings back a lot because we are all human and, and although yeah. we have been called to certain things, whether it's in the ministry or whatever, you still struggle with desires and the flesh. And so that's what a lot of it is, like his desire and really trying to combat that. And, um, you know, is it wrong for him to fall in love with somebody? Did God really make it where there are people who should just serve him and not have relationships or whatever? But it's really sexy. And cool. Uh, yeah. So, well, yeah, that, I mean, that's a huge other topic, but that, you know, I, I grew up very Catholic and I'm no longer Catholic and I've thought for a long time that we'd have a lot of great, awesome priests if we let them get married and be yes. with who they want to be with. So, yeah. but another topic for another time. Yeah. But I do, I try to, um, be very, um, um, <clears throat> well rounded with my with my book. So I might do two, you know, very heavily erotic and then I might go YA P N R or oh. something. So I, you gotta take a break sometimes. Well I just um worked on a book last week that I, I've been on I love romance. I think I'd say it's my favorite genre to narrate, the most fun mm -hmm. for me. But um last week I worked on a book called The Seven Imperfect Rules of Elvira Carr. And I think I may have mentioned it to you. Um mm -hmm. The main character, it's all in first person. It's a long book. And she is a, a young woman with Asperger's. Mm -hmm. And um, it's this author's debut novel. She's she's um, a teacher. She teaches English to, to people who have learning challenges and a lot of people that have Asperger's. And I thought it was beautiful. Like her first book, and it's really, really good. And it was a cool change of pace for me to yeah. play a character like this. Um it's really wild. And is there are there any other type of books that you? I mean, I know that you enjoy romance, and there's a, a lot of different types of romance. I guess I'm really learned getting uh, more into historical romances and things like that. So, are there any that you haven't conquered yet that you'd like to? That's a good question. Um, I you know I've done Regency romances all in British dialects, and um, I've done the super hardcore ones and. Uh, I don't know. I don't know that there's a type I haven't done, but I do want to keep doing more uh, comedy ones. Mm -hmm. I love that very much, and I and I love I love young adult um, romances too. I think they're the best. They're so full of angst and take you back to a time. And I was, you know, I was a very shy teenager. So what? what? Never oh, would have guessed that. <laughs> oh my god, my. I'm revealing myself. My first kiss was when I was almost 16 and the boy pushed me against a car. <laughs> and this was a, I know, I know. And this was a guy I liked very, very much, but the thought of kissing him was terrifying to me. I was just very, very, very shy. So I tell that story and people are like, that's kind of terrible. I was like, I was so grateful because I needed to get it over with. <laughs> so, it's so funny to me that now I narrate these racy, racy things sometimes because I was so shy. Oh, that, um, is, that is funny. But yeah, you're, yeah. You're, so you're not shy now. No, no. I mean, and certainly not about audio. Um, no, because like some of my first books were pretty hardcore. And so I just had to learn, you know, don't be self-conscious. And I've been an actor for so long that mm -hmm. when you're playing other people, it's uh yeah, you can't be self-conscious. That's part of the gig. Let's talk about your acting career. I want to okay. know, I would like to know more. I mean, I know that you um, are also a, pr a playwright. Um, yeah. So if, would I, what would I find you in as far as acting um, any particular movies, TV shows, commercials that I should go on YouTube and look up? No, it's, um, it's mostly been theater. Um, theater is has been my focus since I was 15. Um, but I've, I mean, I've done a couple short films and I did a lot of commercials like on camera, but, um, 
in the past couple of years, it's been kind of a, a shifting time for me where um, I fell so in love with playwriting that that's what I think about now. So like the last play I was in was about seven, eight months ago. And um, I've been turning down a lot of things because I, I've just found I want to be the person that wrote the play, not necessarily the one that's in it. Um, and I, and it might have something to do with audiobooks too, that I feel like every day I'm in the booth playing all these characters and feel like I'm acting constantly. Um, and I love, I love writing plays and I love the fact that once I've written it, it's mine and it exists. Yeah. I can travel the country going to different conferences and workshops and seeing my plays get performed. Um, so yeah, so the main focus for me now is is narrating and playwriting. That's that's where I'm at. Do you act in your own plays? Um, I've only done that once. I think when I started writing, I thought it was so I could create roles for myself, but then I soon like thinking about myself as I was writing was not that inspiring. It felt um I don't know. It wasn't the angle I wanted to come at. So I was like, you know what? You write it first. Learn how to write a good play first. And it's your play. You can probably find a way to cast yourself if you want. Um, but then I found I just got so much joy from being in the audience and watching it come to life with other people in the roles. So it's been interesting. It's all been very surprising, but I, I love the process so much. Well, my dogs are giving you the um, the approval for They that. approve. They, Whoop, because... <laughs> they, they all decided that they want to bark right now. I'm sorry. So anyway, um, I would love to come and see one of your plays. I know that you um, oh, um, were writing one. I don't know if you finished it. Um, and I can't remember the name of it, but I know that you were asking questions on Facebook about um, if, if anyone had um, any who were grew up in the churches or religious, oh, yeah. I think. Did you finish that one? Yes. Well, finished, yes, but I'm doing some more drafts of it. It's um, okay. I'm workshopping it right now. We had the first rehearsal for it yesterday. Um, we're doing four performances of it this summer um, in New York. Um, it's a solo show called Bible Adventure Park, and it's about a girl in this Orlando theme park, this very dangerous biblical park where um, – People people kind of get maimed on the rides, but there's also like a crucifixion every day. There's a Jesus reenactor. Um, <laughs> there's a Last Supper scene. There's um, a stoning. So I'm I'm marketing it as a um, a religious Rocky Horror Picture Show kind of experience where the it audience sounds like, really funny. <laughs> I, I hope so. Yeah, we're gonna get there. It's um yeah, it's it's in August and the audience gets very involved. They have these things called consecration crates and they throw things at the actress and it's, it's going to be fun. Oh man. I don't want to yeah. be in that play. That sounds painful. <laughs> uh, well, no, there, well, there's a stoning. I'm telling, I'm telling too much, but it's a, uh, they're styrofoam craft balls. Okay. She'll well, yeah, I would she's... hope that you wouldn't use real stones, Erin. Just... No, I, I love actors. I would never do that. And if and she'd be insane to sign up for that. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds like fun. I I I um hope that you have something going on later in the year so that I can, you know, stop by and see it. And if not next year, I'm definitely coming to see one of your plays. And I love... and I'm coming to sit in your booth. Yes. Yes, we're going to do that in the fall. Yes, so I'm looking you forward to it. Outside. I'm actually kind of surprised you've never been in a session. It seems like by now you would have because you're like connected to the whole world. <laughs> I wish I, I promise people my life is not as glorious as it looks on Facebook. You know, I dress it up a little <laughs> bit, but um, <laughs> I, live in, in, I live in Indiana and my network, my internet goes out every day. So, yeah. Gotcha. It's, that's my life. <laughs> no, but, but um, I mean, hopefully you find it interesting um, to be there. Because, like, this one place I record, I think it'll be fun for us. Like, I'll be in the other room. I'll be in the booth. But you could sit with the engineer and, like, wear the headphones and see what's happening and how we fix things. And, you know, yeah. I think we could have some fun. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. And, of course, I'll <laughs> I'll do a little video and, and tell people I'm going in. The red light's on. We're recording. 
and uh-huh. um, and then we'll we'll let you know how it, how it goes. That's what I'll tell everybody. We'll let them know how it goes. But yeah, I'm looking uh-huh. forward to hanging out with Erin a little bit later this year, and um, and letting her show me the ropes behind the process of audiobook production. Yeah. So, so let's let's do this fun this fun little thing because Aaron, do you like games? Do you do you of do board course. games? Okay. Uh, okay. Sure. So do you have a favorite board game? Favorite board game. Um, I loved Life as a kid, and of course Monopoly is great. But oh, everybody liked Monopoly. <laughs> yeah, but I hated Monopoly as a kid. But as an adult, I, I get a little competitive and I think it's fun. But Scrabble, I'm more of a Scrabble girl. If yes. That counts as a board game. Yes, yeah. it does count. It has a board. Yeah. And it's a game. So People get mad at me because I'm that person that knows the two letter words and <laughs> I, I kind of do things strategically and um, that, that doesn't always make people happy. But You know what? We're going to have to play a game of Scrabble when I come and visit because I good. love Scrabble. All right. It's on. Okay. So this is basically $25,000 pyramid or $100,000, however much it was, the pyramid with Dick mm-hmm. Clark, the old version. Yeah. It was my favorite, favorite show. And my mom and I used to play it a lot um, along with the people on TV. Then we bought a version. And then, you know, it's sort of like Heads Up as well that Ellen plays on her show. So mm-hmm. we're going to do kind of an audiobook version. And I'm going to ask you clues. And I'm going to see if you can get all of the answers within the 30 seconds. All right. Okay. So you're going to thing where you can't say the word but you're going to describe it and then I say the okay I exactly all right. all right so um this the title the topic is things you find in a studio okay, okay. okay. all right let me set the time yeah and you better you better get them all <laughs> oh, oh so there's a bunch like no I mean there's there's a couple but you have 30 seconds to try to get okay them. okay all right um, you ready yes okay um, this is what you talk into so that people can hear Microphone. you. Microphone. Okay, this is what you sit in. Here. All right, you just bought one of these, I think it's white and furry. Uh, uh, my um, my table, my shag rug. Okay, um, rug, rug is right. Okay, yeah. um, you turn this on so that you can see in the dark. A light, a lamp. Yes, lamp. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is what you use to, I guess, you type on it and you use the audio Keyboard. Mm, uh, Keyboard. The whole, computer. A computer. Okay, you got it, computer. Um, this is what you listen, t- this is what the sound comes out of so that you can hear Headphones. it. Okay, yeah, that was the next one, but no. <laughs> speaker. This is, yes, a speaker. Okay, um, this is what you use to um, write notes. Um, uh, my iPad, I annotate my, a notebook, pen, paper. Yes. Pen. Ding, ding. <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> I went old school. It's a pen, a laptop, tablet. I'm telling you like apps and stuff. <laughs> apps and software. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You got them all. I don't know how many seconds that was, but yay. Thank <laughs> okay. You. All right. So that was the first one. Okay. Great. We'll do one more. Okay. We'll do one more. Um, Let's do, um, should we do parts, parts of an audio book or um, things you see in New York? Okay. Which one? Uh, Let's do things you see in New York. Okay. Things you see in New York. All right. Here we go. You ready? Yes. Okay. Um, They fly around and they're everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is the stuff on the side of the street, and it's in plastic bags. Uh, newspapers. Um, uh, hot dogs. No, it's just on the side of the street. What and does that mean? I, newspapers. People come and pick it up once a week. Fresh. Yes. Um. Um. This is a famous. Um, it's a famous location. There's a song about it. It's a uh, street. Uh, it's a street. Um, a Forty Second Street. No, it's usually a a main street. The same uh, Broadway. Mia. Broadway. Yes, I was, he's gonna make me sing. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is the place where um um 
uh gosh it's real lit up it's bright it reminds me of vegas um Times square yes um okay um uh this is a place where people who write plays and people go um Theater. and yes okay um you said this earlier they're vendors and they sell this and people like to hot. buy them hot dogs they're hungry yes um, they call them dirty water dogs do they yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, these, this is, um, the people who, gosh, um, they drive you around. Uh, taxi drivers. Yes. Okay, that's it. Bus drive. Yeah. <laughs> taxi. Yeah, that's cabbies, though, they sometimes say it, but I think people don't like being called cabbies, so taxi oh, drivers. Okay, well, ta the word was taxi, so you said taxi, so you got that okay. right. And if we had money, like, we'd go to the winter circle right now. So, awesome. But, but we don't have a winner circle, so unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> so um so can you tell us a little bit about what's next um up on your I guess I don't know. Can you tell us like what you're working on or what's Yeah, I think okay. so. Um okay. Yeah, sometimes it's it's a little complicated, right? But like um I know like certain authors have already posted stuff, so I know they're cool with saying it. Um okay. so like I said, uh seven imperfect rules of Elvira Carr is coming. Um, Blackbird, I just finished recording today, is a new book by Molly McAdams, who's um, a first-time, uh, first-to-me time author that I'm working with. Um, and she has this really cool series that hopefully I'll do the whole thing. But it's a really great book, really fun. Um, Blackbird, so I just finished that. And um, The Gravity of Us is coming out, a Brittany C. Cherry book. Mm -hmm. um, and I really love her writing. Um, and that's coming out... I think Brian Polino did that with me. Um, that's coming out on July 4th. Oh, Brian. And, yeah. I just did I really the like swoony him. voice. Did you hear it? Yeah, I'm he's sorry. got a swoony voice. He's one of those book boyfriends. That's why <laughs> um, that uh, that book with the three dudes and the one girl, that's that's dreamy. Three book boyfriends at once. Man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, then, uh, and then next week I'm starting a book called Ghost Face Killer. Oh. So I'm excited about that. Doom, yeah. doom, doom. Is it a mystery yeah. thriller? Uh, the gist that I can say is she's she's a hired assassin who's also three months pregnant. Oh. Uh, yeah. Okay. She's the ghost face <laughs> killer. And I'm doing that. Uh, Jacob Morgan is going to do the epilogue for that. Yay. Well, yeah. I, that sounds really exciting. Again, you know, remember I told you that I listened to you. You did um, uh, "Save My Soul," Christy yes. Hagwood, and you you need to be play more villain parts. Ah, I like that. You that, should. That was, a, that was a long time ago. I think I did that like three, four years ago. That it's was a while old. ago. I, I I always go back because again I just started listening to audiobooks last year, and uh -huh. so I have gone back to 2013, 14, and scooped right. up some books. But I chat with her and she gave me a copy, and I was like, "Oh my God, Aaron's doing it!" And you you did this part. Um, oh gosh, now I gotta remember the the guy's name. He was. I don't want to tell anybody, but you did the bad, you were the bad angel demon guy. Yeah, yeah, I remember. And I was like, oh my gosh, she's killing the, the villain role. <laughs> yeah, it's fun to play bad. That's the great thing about audiobooks, because on stage, you would almost never cast me as the villain. I mm -hmm. kind of look and seem nice. So, yeah, So, when, but when you're doing audiobooks, you play everybody, so there's not a ton of typecasting once you get into the world of a book. So yeah, and if you're on company. stage, if you're on stage, they won't cast you as a guy either, will they? No, usually they won't, and they won't cast you as someone who's eighty, and they won't cast you as a five year old. And that's the beauty of audiobooks; you play everybody. Yeah, I love it. You can you you're yeah. like the one man show, one woman yeah. show. Yeah, that's what it's like. I love sure. it. I love it. So we have a lot of things to look forward to from you um, this year. And hopefully, fingers crossed, you'll hit that 200 mark. And if you hit it, no, not if, when you hit it, All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to celebrate with a glass of wine. Oh. Unless, unless you, well, no, you won't be able to, you won't be able to have any for a minute. Well, I think 
Yeah, well, yeah, I have a baby due in September, so I think, you know, I'll deserve some wine after she vacates. So I'll have <laughs> for sure. After she vacates your womb. <laughs> yeah, mama's definitely going to have a drink. Okay, well, when I come in November, then Great. we will celebrate because I'm pretty sure you'll hit your 200 mark um, definitely before December 31st, so, so we'll have a lot to celebrate. Woohoo! So, Erin, we should remind everybody about the giveaways that we have going on. Yes, go for it. So we have uh, two giveaways that are currently running, and they both end on June 30th. The first one is a signed, orally screwed mug that says, um, "Gosh, does it say I I got or I got orally screwed by Muffy Newtown?" And mm-hmm. it is signed by Muffy. And Nikki Sloan. So that ends on the 30th. Go to uh, the Audio Flow page on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram and you will see how to enter to win. I think that was the first one. And then the second one, we also have an orally screwed mug that says, I've been orally screwed by Erin Mallon. And Erin signed it with her lovely signature. And also Jana Aston has signed the mug as well. And you will get a copy of Love in Transit signed by Jenna Aston and a Grind Me tote bag signed by Jenna Aston, which again, that um, giveaway ends on June 30th. I think they end at like 3 or 4 p.m., right? All right. Something like that. And yeah. then we have something else special that's coming up. Oh, yeah. Erin, do you want to talk about that on this show? Sure, about the Erin interview? Yes. Yeah, so um, we're doing this um, four-way Erin interview. There's a bunch of narrators named Erin that work in the same kind of genres. So it's uh, me, Erin Mallon, um, Erin Bennett, Erin Spencer, and Erin DeWard. We're putting together an interview. um, We're calling it a... uh, what are we calling it? The Aaron interview, a four leaf audio clover. <laughs> we, we're, we're still working on that. I just know it's, it's, yeah. it's like four errands, the four errands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. So we asked each other a bunch of questions and that'll be coming out ideally at the end of the week before, um, audiobook month is over. And so I, I love that, that there's so many errands and you're all different and very talented in your own, um, in your own space and that, um, you all, you all kind of do something a little bit different. So mm-hmm. it's, it's going to be fun, um, watching how you, seeing how you guys interview each other and I get, I get to share it with the world. So I'm excited, um, that I get to play a part in that. So thank you for allowing me to be, um, your outlet. Of course. Thank you for doing it. <laughs> and, um, so let's see, uh, Again, we want to make sure that everybody knows about the Aurally Screw Collection. It basically is a way for you to enjoy swag with some of your favorite uh, romance and erotica um, narrators. Um, You can wear the shirts. You can get the mug. We also will have some special items that will probably come out in July or August. Um, They'll be limited edition. So if you want to make sure you know what's going on with that, be sure that you are following Follow me on Facebook at The Audio Flow and also on Twitter at The underscore audio underscore flow um, and Instagram, The Audio Flow. And the Aurelie Screw Collection is at Cafe Press forward slash audio flow. And you go there and you'll see all the narrators that are listed. So we have um, Aaron, Muffy, Aaron DeWard. Noah Michael Levine, Aiden Snow, Jeffrey Kafer, Joe Arden, Maxine Mitchell, Tracy Marks. Gosh, I feel like I'm missing some people. Joe Raylan. Mm, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Am I missing anybody? Oh, Aaron Shetlock. Can't forget him because if you guys are listening to this episode, he did the intro and I freaking love Aaron. Aaron, another Aaron, but it's a male Aaron. So he's, he's not part of the four leaf Aaron's, 
<laughs> but um, he, he's such a talented guy, and he does does the intro for this show. And you can see, uh, you can listen to all of his different accents he does on there. I love, he's so talented. And hopefully Aaron, that uh, Aaron Mallon and Aaron uh, Shetlock one day will be, be able to work together, which would be really Yeah, cool. that'd be fun. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see how I can make that happen. Make it happen, girl. I'm going to make it happen. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, everybody, thank you so much for joining us today for the uh, audio flow. It's been a long time since we've done a regular episode. Thank you so much, Erin, for coming and hanging out with me. Thanks for having me. It's so fun. Yay. You're always welcome. And next time we're going to do more games and I'll let you give me give me the clues and see if I if I'm smart enough to get the answers right. All right, next time. <laughs> next time. <laughs> um, until then, Aaron, tell everybody how they can find you um, on social media. Yeah, you can find me on Facebook at Erin Mallon, comma, narrator. And then on uh, Twitter, it's super simple. It's just at Erin Mallon, E-R-I-N-M-A-L-L-O-N. And she also has a Muffy account on oh. Twitter. <laughs> you can't forget Muffy. I can't forget Muffy at Muffy Newtown. You know, for so long I was secretive about it, so I forget now that I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> um, yeah, so at Muffy Newtown on Twitter. That's so funny. She's she's out. Everybody, Aaron is. Well, Muffy. I I was found out. You people that listen to audiobooks have these amazing ears, and I kept getting these these <laughs> messages. Are you also Muffy Newtown? I'm like, well, they know. Let's just let's just open this up, and it's been fun. <laughs> Yes, I heard you. I, I, I told you I listened to Cruel and Beautiful, and then I listened to some other stuff, and I was like, "That sure does sound like Aaron." And then uh-huh. I sent a note, I'm like, "Did you? Are you Muffy Newtown?" And yeah. then I said, "Does Muffy have a Twitter account?" Because I think Muffy has a Twitter <laughs> account. And then you know, Muffy showed up and started yeah. working her magic. So, you inspired that, so thank you. You're welcome. Anything I can do to help get you. Um, get more people to know who you are because you're great like thanks great. lady i love her the, the feeling you guys is didn't know i love her and she did not pay me to say any of that <laughs> no i did not <laughs> maybe next time i will though if that's gonna inspire <laughs> <you>. <laughs> all right erin i'm not gonna keep you we're gonna close up and i will have you back on the show um probably when i see you in november we'll get together and do something live and maybe we'll show our faces Ooh, let's do it. We've got good faces. Okay, yes, we do have good faces. <laughs> All right. All, all right, until next time, everybody, thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Audio Flow, where sound... Oh, gosh, I don't even know what my tagline is. Oh, it's love at first sound. See, I change it so much, everybody. Love That's at good. first sound. <laughs> Bye. Bye.